Is it possible to put out the sun? For example, what would happen if we poured all of the Earth's oceans on it? Or even more water? Well, let's find out. The universe is a place full of mysteries. Since ancient times, scientists have been arguing about how space works. But none of us has ever doubted the existence of one thing, the sun. Ah, the center of our solar system. It's big, bright, and immortal? Nah, not really. Actually, the sun is just an ordinary star. It consists of 75% hydrogen, a little helium, and a pinch of other heavy elements. Gravity holds it all together. But in around 5 billion years, the life cycle of the sun will come to an end. The hydrogen inside it will run out. Our star will begin to grow gradually. And you can't even imagine just how big it will become. And then it will start eating all the nearby planets. That's when we'll regret being so close to it. After eating us all, the star will remain a red giant for another billion years or so. And then, sooner or later, it will begin to shrink and fade, turning into a white dwarf. In the end, nothing will remain of it but a bright and colorful planetary nebula. But don't get scared. Right now, the sun is in the middle of its life cycle. It was born about 4.5 billion years ago, and about the same amount of time remains. Fortunately, we were born during the star's best and most stable period. In other words, there's no reason to worry. So let's find one. How about speeding up the sun's life cycle with the help of water? We'll try to collect all the water on Earth and pour it onto the sun. First, we'll need a bucket. No, not this one. We'll need a really, really big bucket. The one that can contain around 326 million cubic miles of water. It will be equal in size to the distance from Washington to Chicago. Or if we can only find ordinary buckets, there should be around 70 quintillion of them. This is a number with 18 zeros. Okay, imagine that we magically got that many buckets. It's time to put out the sun. We splash the star with all this water and nothing? Seriously? Oh, just look at this. The sun has probably felt sorry for us and produced one little solar flare. It turns out that all water on Earth is actually just a pathetic drop for the sun. People often underestimate how much bigger the sun really is than our planet. In reality, it can fit more than 1,003,000 Earths. So yes, the sun won't go out or even get colder. It won't even notice that we've done something. But let's not give up. We really want the sun to go out for some reason. What happens if we pour just enough water on it? And how much is this enough? Remember our quintillions of buckets? Well, we actually need about 370 octillions of them. This number has 27 zeros. It's hard to even imagine, so let's just say that it's a lot of water. Now, let's splash it all over the sun again. Wow, just look at the steam. But the sun hasn't gone out again. On the contrary, it said thank you and suddenly became much bigger and brighter. What's happening? You see, the sun isn't actually a campfire. Inside bonfires, candle flames, there's a chemical combustion. When we pour water on the fire, the water absorbs the heat of the flame and cools it to such an extent that it can no longer maintain the burning reaction. It also blocks the fire's access to oxygen. Water basically stops the chemical process. But the burning of the sun isn't the same reaction. Even though we say it burns, it's not entirely true. What happens there is called nuclear fusion. It's one of the most violent and craziest reactions in the universe. There are many layers of hydrogen going deep into the sun. If you take four hydrogen atoms and ram them together, you're left with an atom of helium. When we talk about the sun, the process is a little more complicated. When the star tries to carry out that fusion, positive protons repel each other. It takes a lot of force and energy to somehow squeeze them together. Fortunately, there's a magical force in space. It's gravity. The sun takes up 99.8% of all the mass of the solar system. Pretty heavy, right? And all this mass is what holds the sun together with the help of an incredible gravitational force. So, gravity takes quadrillions of these little hydrogen atoms and pushes them together every second of every day. And when they collide, they release some energy. So, unlike fire, 
the sun doesn't need oxygen to live. It needs hydrogen. And we all know that water is H2O. It consists of hydrogen and oxygen. So this is literally fuel for the sun. It's like trying to put out a fire with gasoline. More importantly, the extra mass added by water will make the sun heavier. Now, gravity says, thank you for your help. And then it starts to collide protons with each other even faster. And thanks to this, the synthesis speeds up. Great, we've made the sun incredibly strong and now it has eaten us, along with other nearby planets. And if we keep adding water, the sun will sooner or later collapse in on itself. It will blow off its outer layers and become a black hole. Awesome. Now it will pull inside absolutely everything around. Good job, guys. Let's press rewind because clearly our water experiment was a mistake. One small solar flare sounds much better. All right, we're back to our usual calm sun. But it seems like there's something that we forgot. Well, apparently, water was critically important for life on Earth. Who would have thought? Now there's a huge amount of unmoving fish and other marine creatures lying around where the oceans used to be. Poor things. As for deep sea creatures, they simply didn't withstand such a sharp change in pressure. Algae and corals have also dried up. Wait a minute, weren't they responsible for producing 50 to 80% of the world's oxygen? Oops, it's time to put on some oxygen masks. And how are things on dry land? I mean, now everything is just land. But you get the point. Wow, this whole place is lit, and I mean it literally. If there are no oceans, then there are no clouds or rain. Now there are forest fires everywhere. Poor animals have to escape and leave their homes. Oh my. And it's not like they'll be able to find a new home, because all plants, of course, will dry up quickly. There will be literally no place for living left on the planet. So now, Earth looks like a giant desert. Great! But people have been living in deserts for thousands of years, right? Maybe they'll know what to do. They won't. After all, people in the desert also need to drink. So now, there's total chaos everywhere, and survivors fight for the last drops of water. If there are any survivors at all. In fact, no matter how much they fight for resources, their fate is sealed. The ocean absorbs a huge amount of CO2 and the heat coming from the sun. They also distribute this heat throughout the planet, making it pleasant to live on. But once they're gone, the temperatures will quickly jump to 250 degrees Fahrenheit and above. But even if we forget about the high temperatures, now we have no clouds and they helped us too, by not letting through solar radiation. So we're also under the direct impact of the sun's rays. Our last hope is icebergs. Now that everything is terribly hot, they've melted. And maybe they'll be the last hope for humanity. But that cool solar flare was definitely worth it. Silly humans. Now, did you know that our sun is actually green? Okay, okay, I'm kidding. But in reality, it's all colors you can imagine at the same time. Wait, what? I know it sounds like a joke, but I'm being serious. Can't you tell? In fact, our sun contains absolutely all the waves of the light spectrum. It's simultaneously red, blue, green, yellow, you name it. Where do you think rainbows come from? When sunlight gets reflected off water droplets in the air, it splits into a bunch of colored waves that we can see individually. And when they're all together, we see a white ray of light. Our eyes are unable to perceive the concept of all colors at the same time. So their combination seems white to us. Wait, you might say, why white? Isn't the sun yellow? Yep, it's yellow too. But please, don't stare at the sun just to make sure. It appears white when we see it from the International Space Station. This is the sun's real color as our eyes perceive it. The sun gets a yellowish hue when its rays get scattered in Earth's atmosphere. Our atmosphere doesn't let the blue rays of the spectrum pass very well. But the red ones? Hey, sure, why not? By the way, that's why the sky seems blue to us. The atmosphere scatters the blue color all over the place. During sunrise and sunset, short blue waves get reflected, but the long red ones reach us perfectly. That's why we see sunsets as pink, orange, or red. But what would happen if the sun had a different color? To answer this question, let's quickly repeat what we've learned. 1. The sun has the whole color spectrum in it. 2. 
our atmosphere is like blue rays? No. Nope. Red rays? Anytime. So you probably already guessed what would happen if the sun was, let's say, red. The whole world would look like it does during sunsets. Not bad, huh? We wouldn't even have to wait for the evening to admire the scarlet sky. Orange water and a bright red moon. Yeah, it would be darker than what we're used to, but still not bad. Oh, by the way, one day, the sun will actually turn red. When its life comes to an end, it will expand and gradually turn into a red giant before finally burning out. But uh, it's not going to be so much fun for us. So let's hope we won't be around to see that moment. I know I won't. Hey, I've got a party to go to. Okay, now, what if the sun was green? Well, the truth is, the sun is green. So here's your dialogue. Wait, are you kidding me? Didn't you just say that it's white? Ooh, good job on that, by the way. Well, not exactly, bud. The sun just looks white. But technically, it has a temperature of around 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit. And the pink wavelength of the sun's spectrum corresponds to the green-blue hue. But to make sure that the sun is green, we need to drown out the rest of the visible spectrum. Then our atmosphere will let through a pure green color. And what'll happen then? Well, everything will be green. And everything will also be a bit darker. Well, face it, it's not easy being green. Okay, moving on. Now let's paint the sun blue. Blue stars actually do exist. They're called blue giants. Fortunately, our sun is not one of them. Why fortunately? Well, because if it was a blue giant, it would be a young, beautiful, unimaginably large, and very, very hot star. See, our red is hot, blue is cold logic doesn't apply to stars. The hottest stars are white and blue, and the coldest are yellow and red. Yeah, our sun is actually very cold compared to other stars. Now, take the average temperature in your city, but multiply it like by hundreds of thousands. Yeah, we're struggling with global warming here, but global burning? Eh, no thanks, blue giants. Anyway, let's imagine that the sun turned blue. How would we see the world? Surprisingly, nothing would change. Remember how I said that the atmosphere scatters blue light? That's why, in this case, everything would remain almost the same. Maybe the sky would get bluer, but we wouldn't see much difference. And finally, the darkest, pun intended, option. What if our sun turned black? Stock up on lamps and candles, because there is no more light. People use electricity all over the world 24-7. We also can't see the moon anymore. After all, we can observe it these days only because the sun's rays get reflected off of it. Now, the only thing we still have to illuminate our nights are stars, but they don't help us much. Good thing this scenario is totally unrealistic and there are no black stars, right? Well, yeah, there are no black stars. And still, our sun will eventually become completely black one day. And I don't mean a black hole. I'm talking about black dwarfs here. You've probably heard of white dwarfs. Maybe even seven dwarfs. When a star like our sun is about to finish its life, it expands and turns into a red giant. And then, gradually losing its upper layers, it turns into white dwarfs. Since they no longer produce fuel, they slowly cool down. All that remains is a small core, living out its life and burning bright. And when the star cools down completely, right, it turns into a black dwarf. But you've probably never heard of them. Why? Because, surprise, surprise, they don't exist. And no, I was not lying. The thing is, a star needs about one quadrillion years to turn into a black dwarf. And our universe is still a baby. It's only about 14 billion years old. So no star has reached this stage yet. Even the most ancient of them still emit a little light. That's why black stars are just a theory. And it's unlikely that we'll ever see such a star at all. But remember the famous saying, the stars that we see at night are already ghosts because their light has reached us only now. Well, that's a myth. They're all still alive. Why am I telling you all this? Well, let's imagine that our sun turned into a black dwarf. The entire solar system would immediately get plunged into absolute darkness. It would also be terribly cold. The moon would leave its orbit and crash into Earth. Wait, no. Let's overlook this moment and assume we're still alive. Fortunately, we wouldn't freeze instantly, as you might think. Earth's core has its own temperature, more than 9,000 degrees. But the temperatures on the surface of the planet would still immediately drop to 32 degrees Fahrenheit. The core would gradually cool down. 
Every two months, its temperature would drop by two times. In just two months, Earth's surface temperature would be minus 190 degrees, and in a year, it would reach minus 450 degrees. Most plants would disappear pretty quickly, not because of the cold, but because of the lack of photosynthesis. Others would live a little longer thanks to the oxygen still remaining in the atmosphere. And, oddly enough, trees would survive for a very long time. They have a slow metabolism and get sugar from the ground. The upper layer of the oceans would freeze very quickly. Fortunately, this thick crust of ice would insulate deep waters, so the entire ocean wouldn't freeze for some time. Marine creatures would be doing pretty well. They existed long before us and are already used to crazy temperature changes, the lack of oxygen and food, huge pressures, and other joys of deep-sea life. And what about us humans? Well, first of all, we'd start getting sick. Without vitamin D, people would face a huge number of different health problems. Also, our bodies need sunlight to produce melatonin. This melatonin helps us understand when we should go to bed and wake up. If people didn't have this hormone, their bodies would get very confused and wouldn't understand whether they needed to sleep or not. That would mean insomnia for many people. But we would still be able to survive. We'd have two options – to build giant submarines and go down into the depths of the ocean closer to Earth's core, or stay on the surface, living our lives in some location where we'd have sources of geothermal energy – in Iceland, for example. We could also settle near volcanoes. Their heat would be enough to warm us for a long time. Our vision would adapt to the dark, but at some point, it would reach its maximum. So we'd need to get used to living in complete darkness. But who knows? Maybe we would adapt to this life, too. So, which option would you prefer? Living at the bottom of the ocean in a submarine or on the surface near volcanoes? Hey, ready to test your knowledge? Of course you are! You'll get one point for each correct answer. So, without further ado… The sun is yellow. Do you think this is a myth? Ask someone to draw a picture of the sun, and chances are you'll get a yellow or orange circle in the sky. Surprise! The sun is not really yellow. If you see it somewhere outside the Earth's atmosphere, it'll look white. How come? According to NASA, the sun's temperature is the reason why it's white. The sun consists of all colors mixed together, so it appears to our eyes as white. Then why do you think we see it as yellow or orange from Earth? Colored wavelengths, which are yellow and orange, are longer, and they are the only ones that make it to our eyes. The other short wavelength colors sprawl in the atmosphere, and the sky looks blue to us during the day for the same reason. Meteorites are hot as fire when they land on Earth. What do you think, myth or fact? When people see a fireball around a meteorite, they think it's super hot. Well, this is a myth. Meteorites don't immediately land on Earth. Most of them have been in space for billions of years. Space has a cold environment, just a few degrees above absolute zero cold, you know. But don't meteorites fall into the Earth in flames? How come? The fireball is actually the air in front of the meteorite. It is compressed by the super high speed of the meteorite. The outside catches fire, but that layer is burned off on impact as a result of landing on Earth. As you would probably guess, when they land, the meteorites are lukewarm at most, but not as hot as lava. One side of the moon is permanently in the dark. Do you think this is a myth or a fact? This is a myth. Oh, come on. First the sun and now the moon. Am I living a lie? <laughs> so people look at the sky and see only the bright side of the moon. The reality is the Earth shines equally on all sides of the moon as it rotates and orbits the Earth. Half of the moon is in shadow, and half gets sunshine similar to Earth. That's not true. Similar to Earth, it doesn't have a permanent dark side. The logic is simple. The moon orbits Earth, but it also rotates on its own axis. When you think about it, we're always looking at the same side of the moon. Black holes take in everything that comes their way. What is it? Myth or fact? Black holes don't have infinite mass and gravitational force. But still, no one really knows for sure what happens to the things pulled into them. Experts do know black holes do not have supergravity, though. 
Let's imagine this. If there was a black hole as big as the sun, it wouldn't immediately eat the whole planet. Imagine black holes as vacuum cleaners. It does draw in a cloud of dust near its range, but other specks of dust remain where they are. So even if there was a black hole replacing the sun, all the planets would continue to orbit similarly. They wouldn't go into the black hole. If a star or something else got into the range of the black hole, only then would its gravity affect the star. When you call someone, the signal bounces off a satellite. Is this a myth or a fact? Yep, it's a myth. Or rather, an urban legend or misconception, you name it. I mean, there are some satellite phones, but we, you know, regular people, don't use those every day. Although, your mobile phone works in a much different way. When you call someone, the nearest tower connects you to the other person online. This is why there are tower connections, huge networks of tower-to-tower connections, and hidden cables. The moon has no gravity. Any guesses? Myth or fact? This is an urban legend. Ask any astronaut you know. If you don't know any, just trust me. There is footage proving that the moon has gravity. When I say the moon has gravity, don't think it's similar to the gravity on Earth that makes the apple fall. The moon's gravity is only about one-sixth of Earth's. How does it feel to walk on the surface of the moon? The second man on the moon, Buzz Aldrin, mentioned it's like moving in slow motion and, quote, perhaps not too far from a trampoline, but without the springiness and instability, end quote. The sunset on Mars appears blue. Do you think this is a myth or a fact? This is a fact! Magnificent sunsets. The sky is filled with different shades of yellow. Now, imagine this in blue. According to NASA, sunsets on Mars would look bluish, watching them with bare eyes. It's because of dust. Dust particles closer to the sun appear in blue tones. There is something called moonquakes. Does it sound like a myth or a fact? It's a fact. Quakes happen on the moon too, and they're called moonquakes. They have different features, not really similar to the quakes on Earth, though. A planet can be hot enough to vaporize rocks. Any guesses? Is this a myth or a fact? This is a fact. The temperature in this universe is indeed very high. There's a planet, the temperature of which is enough to melt and even vaporize rocks. It's two times bigger than the Earth. This super-Earth is similar to our planet, but it is way too hot. Experts believe that it possibly has oceans of lava and clouds that rain molten rock. One million Earths can fit inside the sun. Do you think this is a myth or a fact? This is a fact. Although the sun is one of more than 100 billion stars in the Milky Way, which is at the heart of our solar system, it can fit one million Earths. Yeah, it looks small when we see it from here. But it's only because it's so far away from Earth. All comets have tails. Myth or fact? It's true. Some comets simply don't show their tails. They look like someone threw a snowball into space. Space is completely silent. What do you say? Shh, I knew it was too easy. This is a fact. Space doesn't have an atmosphere, so there's no way to hear any sound there. Mercury is the hottest planet. Myth or fact? Mercury is the closest planet to the Sun, so this should be a fact, huh? No, not really. Venus is the hottest planet in our solar system and the second planet from the Sun. But the distance from the Sun isn't what defines the temperature. The heat depends on the atmosphere. So Venus's atmosphere consists mostly of carbon dioxide and some nitrogen. This combination makes the atmosphere very thick. When I say thick, I mean it. Throughout the year, the surface of Venus maintains a temperature of around 860 degrees Fahrenheit. Mercury's surface resembles the temperature of a desert, but is much higher in terms of temperature variations. Venus spins clockwise. What do you say? This is a fact. Venus spins in the opposite direction compared to many other planets. The Sun rises in the west, and its rotation is very slow. Venus needs 225 Earth days to complete its spinning around the Sun. The planet's distance from the Sun affects the duration of one rotation. 
is too close to the sun, and the sun has a strong, noticeable pull on the planets. Footprints on the moon can stay there for millions of years. Do you think this is a fact or a myth? Fact checked! The moon has no atmosphere, so there's no wind blowing. And without the wind, there's no way to erase the footprints without any intervention. So, how many points did you get? Let me know in the comments. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.